851, turn right, heading 180. Hey everyone, welcome back to DJ's Aviation. As you may be aware, a key story that's been on the channel over the past month has been the incident involving the Lion Air 737 MAX. I'll leave a card in the top right should you want to explore some other videos where I discuss developments with the incident. However, last week I did inform you that a report was going to be released this week, as well as more critical information on what went wrong during the crash which occurred a month ago. Not only do I have the report for you all now, but I also have more information on what went wrong. We begin with developments on Boeing's faulty sensor, which was included in the report. Before I go any further, the preliminary report still doesn't list a firm cause of the crash. It's also important when discussing a sensitive incident like this that you know that I'm personally not blaming any party for the incident. I'm merely reporting what has been published. If blame has been put on a certain individual or factor, I will inform you all of that. The main takeaway from this has been that the pilots on board the doomed flight were struggling to really understand the malfunctioning sensor. In addition, this sensor wasn't repaired when it needed to be. While we knew this prior to the report being released, the circumstances as to why it wasn't repaired make the situation that little bit more startling. A mechanic was working on other sensors on board the aircraft that would later complete JT610. According to the Indonesian National Transport Safety Committee, this said sensor, which in quotation marks caused the crash known as the AOA or Angle of Attack sensor, was neither explored nor fixed during this maintenance. This sensor meant that pilots from flights prior to JT610 and also on that flight struggled to read the airspeed and altitude that they were at. This basic information, as you can imagine, is not only critical for pilots, but also critical for systems to understand what the aircraft is doing. Pilots on board JT610 said that they had struggled to understand what their systems were reading and then radioed in to air traffic controllers, noting that they had a flight control problem. Other pilots, quote, noticed the aircraft was automatically trimming and aircraft nose down. The pilot moved the STAB trim switches to cut out and continued the flight with manual trim without autopilot until the end of the flight. It therefore appears, according to the pilots, but also reports, that this faulty angle of attack sensor, which measured the plane's pitch in relation to the oncoming airflow, did indeed malfunction on previous flights that took place in earlier days. However, despite these malfunctions, it was ignored by mechanics, who passed it off simply as a minor issue on the day of the crash. With any aircraft, a small issue should always be investigated, as while they are in the air, they could grow to such an issue that sees a plane with 189 passengers fall from the sky and smash into the sea, leaving no survivors. The pilots on board previous flights acted on the malfunction by apparently turning off a specific motor which was causing the aircraft to pitch downwards to avoid a stall. That stall was coming from the faulty sensors, which were reading incorrect data. This was likely what occurred on JT610. It appears that while other pilots did shut down the motor, this wasn't the case on JT610, and the pilots were left confused as the aircraft plunged into the sea. Boeing released a statement following this preliminary report and said, The report explains that the maintenance logs for the accident aircraft recorded problems related to airspeed and altitude on each of the four flights that occurred over the three days prior to Flight 610. The logs indicate that various maintenance procedures were performed, but issues related to airspeed and altitude continued on each successive flight. The logs indicate that among other procedures, on October the 27th, two days prior to the incident flight, one of the airplane's angle of attack, AOA sensors, was replaced. The entire statement will be linked below in the source zone of the description, and it's definitely worth a read in my opinion. I won't read the entire statement out, but it does shed more light on the incident, and how other flights panned out. That will be the focus for the last part of this video. The report states that the flight crew of the October 28 flight turned off the stabilizer trim switches within minutes of experiencing the automatic nose down trim and continued with the manual trim through the end of the flight. The report further notes that the pilot performed three non-normal checklist procedures, including the runway stabilizer non-normal checklist. Ultimately, a number of news agencies are highlighting the fault of the pilots on board while others have targeted the mechanic who failed to fix the AOA sensor when the fault had been reported. 
Time in this sort of case is extremely valuable, as with every passing day, more is usually uncovered about the circumstances of any, especially this crash. As I've said from the start, whenever something breaks on the incident, I'll be here to cover it, and I appreciate you all continuing to tune into these videos. I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and I very much look forward to you all joining me in the next one.